Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Pixelated Podcast. I am Patrick Reif. I am one of the co-founders and the CVO here at Pixelated. Um, and today, we're going to be talking about, uh, spoiler alert, photo booth rentals. I know, super surprising, right? But we're going to click out a little bit today, and we're going to focus just kind of, you know, quite generally on photo booth rentals, you know, what's included in them, how much that they cost, um, and you know, what you need to know about in order to rent one. So, um, for anybody that is listening or tuning in, I just want to mention up front that we have a great, uh, post, a blog post over on our website, uh, that kind of goes even more into details on this. We're going to try and keep this, uh, not overwhelmingly long. So, um, if this resonates and you're trying to get more information, I would definitely uh, suggest checking out the show notes. Uh, we'll put a link to that original blog post so you can go over and check the uh, the actual copy out and read it for yourself, see some photos. Um, but that being said, let's get into it. So, um, right, you're, you're thinking about renting a photo booth. You probably have a lot of questions and, um, you know, th those could vary as far and wide as how much does it cost to why would I use it and how do I do it and what do I need to know about? So whether it's finding the vendor, what you're getting in exchange for it. So, you know, you host an event, there's a very good chance you want to make sure that there's some kind of photo moment that's there that's built into it. Um, but, you know, the different versions of photography at your event are wide and vast and they can be expensive and they can be cheap and they can be underwhelming and they can be overwhelming. In, in this podcast, we're going to talk about, you know, what a photo booth rental actually, package actually is, you know, like what's included, what's the most important part of it, um, some average photo booth pricing, you know, this, that, and the third. So, you know, first and foremost, what is a photo booth rental package? So when you go to a wedding, you go to a birthday party, you go to South by Southwest and go to the Nike spot and there's a photo booth there, like nine times out of 10, it's a photo booth rental. Some of those brands and organizations, they might own their own photo booth and they're using it on an ongoing um, basis. Um, we can help you too, but by and large, that's a rental and they have either found a local vendor or they have found a company that gives them the equipment that they need to be able to create that photo moment, whether it's at your niece's uh, bat mitzvah or whether it's at the local ice cream parlor doing a 4th of July thing. So um, in the world of photo booth rentals, there are a ton of options as well. So um, you have things that are like a full uh, DIY style package, right? Uh, and it's going to come with everything that you need. It comes with the stand, it comes with the kiosk, maybe there's a backdrop, props, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, when a lot of people hear photo booths, they think about your traditional kind of like on the boardwalk, get in the box, close the curtain. Um, and while those options are available for the events world, um, more often than not, you're going to find something that's referred to as an open air photo booth. Um, and, and when you get to open air photo booths, there's a huge gamut of options inside of those as well, right? So from uh, your DIY photo booth kit, something that, like what Pixelated does, right? So you go into our online shop, you pick out the photo booth that you want, we build your order and we ship it directly to you, um, all the way across to like a fully staffed, you know, person shows up, they set everything up for you, they stand there and they operate it for the duration of your event, uh, they pack it up and they take it away when it's over with. Um, so a lot of options that are there, um, and, and you can, in your town, there's more likely than not, there are options for all of these that are there. It's just all about figuring out which of these options are the best fit for your event, you know, based on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, so, you know, like a, a DIY kit might be the right thing if you're planning on using it for a week, or you've got great brand ambassadors or people that are there to operate it. Um, you know, a staff solution might be better if you're really worried about not having someone there to make sure that everything is kind of operating and going the way that you had in mind. So, um, so let's start off right from the jump, you know, like what's included in a typical package. So like first and foremost, it's the photo booth kiosk, you know, like the gear, the booth, if you will. Um, so most DIY packages are going to include a kiosk, some kind of camera, right? An iPad. Um, something more customized, like a pixelated booth where there's a camera integrated to it. There's a touch screen, there's a tripod for it to sit on, and um, either some built-in flash or some additional lighting, right? So the idea behind a DIY kit is to make it as simple as possible for you to set up and operate it on your own without needing a photographer, um, without needing a person to come in. There are a ton of great 
um, DIY photo booth options on the market and a great uh, amount of ideas to help kind of get the juices flowing. Um, that is something that you can absolutely achieve um, if you um, if you feel like that's the right fit for what you're looking to do. So at Pixelated, that's what we do. We have um, we spent a ton of time as a company um, doing both. You know, like we started as a full service staffed photo booth rental, and then we built our own software and our own hardware technology, and we evolved the products that we got them to a place where we didn't really feel like it was necessary to send out staffing for our photo booths to be um, successful for our customers to be able to use them. That being said, um, you know, like if the attendant option is what you're looking for, um, you know, like the benefit is that you're going to have someone there that's able to take care of all of it, right? They're, they're bringing it in, they're setting it up, they're making sure that it's working. Um, you know, the, the holdback is that um, certainly from a price perspective, when you're paying for staffing, it's going to be more expensive. Um, but also, if you want to use it for a longer period of time, um, that may not be the best fit, right? You're, you may not find that having a staff photo booth is the right thing um, for your eight hour long, you know, conference that's going to also be three days long, you know, like it might be a better fit for you to not have staffing. Um, at the same time, if you're throwing a children's party and you're worried that there's going to be a ton of kids there and it's going to be hectic and the peace of mind of having a person there is, um, is, is exactly that. It's bringing peace of mind, then whatever, that's the right fit for you. So moving down, the, the next thing that, that you're going to have included, right, in a photo booth rental is going to be your props and your accessories. Um, so like hats, glasses, uh, boas, anything you can think of that you traditionally see, um, as well as if, uh, if this is like a branded or a corporate event, like figuring out ways to integrate the branding of the organization, you know, like if it's a nonprofit uh, for whatever, heart disease, you know, like figuring out ways that you can add props that are in there. Um, that are going to complement the vision for what the event is about. A lot of photo booth companies are going to have a lot of stock events, um, and then, or I'm sorry, stock photo booth props. And then also, if you've got other things that are specialized, um, either they will be able to provide them for you, or they can point you in the right direction for where you might be able to go uh, to get something that matches your event better. Um, Speaking of matching your event, another thing uh, in the photo booth rental process that you're going to take into account is kind of like the theme. Um, so if the theme for your event is a great Gatsby party, you want to look for uh, some designs around the photo booth. And that could either be the touch screens that are on the actual kiosk where it says tap to take photo or let's get started or something along those lines. Matching right that art deco great Gatsby theme. It could be the overlay that's going on top of the photos. Like maybe it's a cool gold frame. Um, maybe there's a few kind of different geometric options that are there. But thinking about the photo booth theme is definitely another integral part of a photo booth rental package. Um, and then moving on from there, kind of the last big element is uh, is the the backdrop for the photo. So this is a, um, is there's so many options that are there. There are so many ways to approach doing this. Um, maybe you want to have something classic and it's just a solid white or a solid back backdrop. Um, maybe you want to have like a different color of sequin, you know, like a rose gold or a silver sequin backdrop. Um, maybe you want to use something that already exists there inside of your space. Um, maybe you want to use a step and repeat because it's a big branded event or you have uh, it's a fundraiser and you've got sponsors whose logos you want to activate behind you. Um, all of those are options, but they're going to fall under, um, you know, things that are included inside of a photo booth rental package. Um, and I think that, that, that probably like the, the last important thing that's very uh, unique is the amount of customization that you're going to bring to it. So um, an example of that would be if, if this is for a wedding, you know, like do the bride and groom have a monogram, uh, a logo, uh, a, a wedding hashtag that they want to be in, incorporated into the design, right? Um, if this is, you know, like a fundraiser for the local pet shelter, or if this is, uh, you know, like the launch of a brand new model of Aldi car, there's a good chance that they're going to want to have the lo like the Aldi logo, right? We want to have the, the model of the car. We want to have some of that creative integrated inside of the system. So those are kind of uh, a lot of the, the, the core themes that put together the look and the feel of the experience. Outside of that, right, from a, from a photo booth rental package perspective, um, 
you know, you're looking at the, the, the length of time that you're able to use it for. Like, are there limits on the amount of photos that you can take? Um, again, if we're going back to the, the conversation of a, of a self-service DIY kit versus um, a full-service staffed kit, right, that, uh, that time limit question comes into sharp contrast there, right? So the DIY kits, typically you're renting them by the day, so you can use them as much as you want. Um, whereas if you are, um, you're working with a vendor and a staff photo booth, typically they are going to, um, they're going to contract with you by the hour, two hour, three hour, four hour long event. So something to think about. Um, moving on in, inside of the, the, what's included in your package space or what it is that you're looking for. Um, there are options for photo booths that provide, um, prints on site. So like your classic kind of photo strips. Um, probably what's more common these days is a four by six, uh, photo that prints out, uh, right. So it captures three or four photos, prints them out onto a photo strip, and then your guests are able to take them away, um, versus a digital photo booth. And, and that's going to allow your customers to be able, or, or your guests, customers, guests to be able to email and text themselves the photos. Um, a lot of photo booth options out there offer both. Some only offer one or the other, um, it's important for you to just know that those options exist. And then from there, um, weigh the pros and cons of, of whether that's something that is important to you. Um, obviously when you're adding printing, uh, similarly to adding staffing, it's going to influence the price of your package. Um, but also thinking about it around what you want people to do, you know, like, is it important to have people sharing these photos on, uh, on social media? You know, if that's the case, then you want to make sure that they have, you know, that they have their photos on their phones, right? So emailing and texting those photos is incredibly important. Um, if it's important to you to have them uh, put the photo on their fridge with a magnet, then um, then having a print photo booth there is going to be something that you really need to take into account. Um, beyond that, the other kind of extras and add-ons that you might want to think about, you know, like if you're, if uh, you've got a digital photo booth, right? If email and texting is a priority, making sure um, that you have uh, have a, a good Wi-Fi hotspot that's there. You know, typically uh, in in the year 2023, most venues have great Wi-Fi, and and that's not an issue. But it's always something that is smart to plan for because nothing is worse than planning to have your guests being able to email and text the photos in real time so they can be sharing them, um, and have that not happen. So, um, kind of those those are j just from like a, a jumping off point. Those are kind of the things that you want to think about. Um, so moving on, what can you expect when it comes to uh, the cost of, of rental packages? So um, obviously DIY kits are going to be a little more affordable. Full service kits are going to be a little bit more expensive. Um, generally speaking, you know, like DIY kits are going to run between 300 to $600 a day. Uh, sometimes the things that you're going to see that, that, um, represent that kind of spread in pricing is, you know, are there different uh, models of kiosk that are maybe producing different quality photos? Is the lighting different? Um, those are probably some of the things that you're going to see influence the cost of pricing there. Um, on the other hand, if we're looking at fully staffed photo booths, you know, the range could be as little as $750 all the way up to, you know, $1,500 for your, your average, you know, four hour photo booth. Um, you know, granted, I think what we should acknowledge is there are a lot of different photo booth types these days, right? There's like a classic photo booth. There's a black and white booth. There's a GIF photo booth, a green screen photo booth, a mirror photo booth, a 360 photo booth. So there's a lot of variance in there. So, you know, don't take these numbers as, as the be all end all. Um, but at the same time, like it's a jumping off point, give you some idea of what to expect. That's it. That brings us to the end of today's episode. I hope you guys all found this really valuable. Um, if you have other questions that I didn't answer, or there's something that I said that would have been great for me to expand on a little bit more, um, put it in the chat. But otherwise, make sure you hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening, whether this is on podcast or on video format. We want to make sure that you see these videos and podcasts on a regular basis um, so that way you can keep tuning in, finding out more information. So, okay, that's me, Patrick, Pixelated. I'm out of here.